Hello viewers, Super GT here. This is FIA round number three. So I'm going to show you both the races I did, manufacturer and nations. Let the carnage or let the clean racing begin. We'll see what happens. So this is qualifying. I've gone for my normal strategy here of uh, leaving the pit lane, which is quite a good strategy rather than staying in. Uh, but then coming back to the pit lane rather than setting a lap, get some fresh rubber and I can go about setting my fastest lap with uh, minimal fuel and newer tyres. So here we are just trying to set ourselves apart from the, from the rest of the pack. You can see on the map there's quite a lot of cars just ahead so I want to just uh, create some space for myself which is quite important on a qualifying lap. So now I've got the fresh rubber, I've got less fuel in the tank and I can go about setting a quick lap. I haven't set a lap yet so the pressure's on with this with this method because you pretty much have to deliver, you know, when it matters. So that uh, this is going to be my first lap. You see, I'm on, I'm 17th and last, crossing the line to go third, seven tenths off of the lead, a one tenth off of second. So if we improve here on this second attempt, then definitely get second place, first place possible, but we'll see. So we've got some possible traffic just ahead of us. Now that, I mean, even if I don't catch up, it's still a bit of a distraction having someone that close ahead of you. But, you know, I'm just going to have to deal with it. And on my previous lap, I did make a slight mistake, so I know I can definitely go quicker. So, of course, driving the Nissan GTR here, as, as we all know, I think probably by now, I've chosen Nissan, you can't change, so that's why I've got this car. And around this track, it seems to, it seems to be doing well. You know, it seems to handle nicely has good power it's a good all-round kind of car and this track uh, it, it kind of suits that so I'm kind of happy with it around here and uh, then coming down into the hill coming down the hill into the next hairpin uh, please fix penalty bailing off to the side there I think he, his lap hasn't gone too well we'll see him later in the second race as well so winding out into this is probably the most difficult this is no this is easily the most difficult section on the circuit, probably one of the most difficult chicanes in the whole game. This bit here, you really have to be so brave and committed. Traffic slowing down, we've got traffic just ahead. Are we going to catch up with him before we go into the corner? It's kind of an awkward position as we go in on the brakes, almost into the back of him, but just about have enough space. Luckily, I didn't uh, go into the back of him. So, I'm going to get the toe up the straight, he's going to pull me along. So, that might save me a tiny amount of time. As we come to the line, what is it going to be? It's going to be third, very close to second, second improved as well, and just two tenths of the lead. Are you sure about that? Shut up, clock in and load up. So qualifying went rather well. This is where the race begins. We are away now. Let's go and see what we can do. The the quality in this lobby was slightly lower. I mean, if it was anything like my previous races, I would nowhere near have a chance of qualifying third. But still, we should see exactly how this one goes. You can see, looking behind, the other, guy, the other guys focus on each other, so I kind of had the opportunity to run my normal line into there. Uh, Fosi gets an unusual line on the way in, kind of hems himself to the outside on the way out. So I'm going to get the car back on him. He bails out, so I can take the racing line here. So now I can hunt down the leader in the Viper. So he was only two temps quicker in qualifying. And I think I could have matched that. The Viper is a good car. So we'll see if we can go about trying to catch him up. Sometimes it is an advantage to be behind. As we've seen so many times with the slipstreaming. And the ability to, uh, to fuel save. So 13 laps. We will have a pit stop halfway through. Well, after six laps or after seven laps. So just either side of halfway through. And... That, uh, that's that's going to split the strategy of course so there's a room there's room for maneuver and strategy so you can undercut everyone on lap six or kind of try to go a bit longer and have the fresher tires for the second stint by pitting at the end of lap seven we'll see how that one goes so catching up actually for this second half of the lap onto the back of visual ben spees now this chicane here honestly is my nemesis absolute nemesis you see the car kind of kind of rooted to the ground so this car really heavy it's a big boy, very big boy, and 
kind of, kind of planted for that chicane. It is very, very hard to get right though. You do have to get that turn in absolutely nailed. Otherwise, there's a good chance you're going to say hello to the tyre wall. And hopefully that doesn't happen. The one thing you do have to consider here, tyre wear, especially in this car, the, the front tyres are going to start wearing. Your turning in ability won't be as good, so you're going to have to start turning in a little bit earlier and maybe lifting off to compensate for the lack of grip. Into turn one then, and we are definitely very close, uh, possibly with a chance of overtaking. Now there's always this decision to make as we go very close actually. Do I fuel save right behind him, or do I really just try to go to the pass? I think, I think my tactic now is really just to try to get the pass done because I think trying to fuel save it can be a risk, and I think I'm better just with controlling the race from the front by slowing, slowing everyone else down, blocking them, or defending fairly, shall I say, and controlling the, the race that way instead. Because there's always a risk if, if they're ahead that you make a mistake and then they get away by like a second. So we're going to try to get past. But you see, I've made a mistake through that chicane. That chicane the car does feel heavy. So the car is heavy. It can help in some situations with you know, like going over curbs. But then through the fast direction changes, it, it feels a bit cumbersome. So the direction change can be a bit slow. So he's pulled away, he's edged out half a second in this middle sector. So this circuit is pretty much a triangle with three sets of different chicanes on each edge of the triangle and then with three hairpins as the corners of the triangle. So it's quite a unique layout. I, I, I quite like the layout of Drag Trail Seaside. I don't mind it too much. It doesn't always produce the best racing for me because I'm so bad through, the, through that chicane that we just went through. But it's always a good challenge. And you see that actually this, this final sector, in, in fact the second and third sector of this lap has not been good at all. As um, the leader has pulled out over a second now, 1.2. And this is lap 3, 1.5 seconds of the gap now. Can we take the chicane properly? You have to go out really wide, turn in, be very committed over the curb, very close to the walls, as close as possible to really maximise your lap time. You can lose a lot of lap time there if you don't maximise it completely and I'm not quite maximising it, I'm just going to hope that the other people are maximising it as well. So onto the, onto the main straight, this is the end of lap number three, so we're going to fast forward quickly and at, at this point of the race, this is kind of a tipping point here, uh, here because I'd say that the leader is clearly getting away and there's not much I can do in response and third place is really beginning to reel me in so there's def definitely a shift in focus here uh, from attacking first to now defending for second as I go very wide just dip two wheels beyond that curb and it's almost going to uh, suck me off not quite though I do get a penalty though which well I I'm not sure that was quite warranted because I probably would have lost time anyway but I'm going to have to deal with that now so later on into the chicane lap four a little bit wide you see that the tyre wear now beginning to come into effect as I can't quite turn in as quickly as I'd like. I'm going to go defensive here. He is going to swing over to the right hand side and he, d he now has the inside line into the final corner on the brakes. He's got the job done up into second. Can I get a cut back done here? Not quite as I just go into the, his rear quarter panel, give him a boost and I'm going to have to settle for third right now. I am in the slipstream though and I do think that the Nissan GTR here is definitely faster than Hyundai in a straight line, especially with that, with the toe in assistance. So I'm going to sweep by back into second. This is the first chicane. It's going to hold my inside, or sort of hold an inside or middle kind of ground and force him onto the inside, very narrow, where he really doesn't want to go. And he sensibly bails out. So I'm going to keep the second place here. And as I said, the, the focus has definitely shift now, shifted now from fighting for first to now fighting for second as he looks up the inside see his nose poking in there as just about sweep around the outside to keep the place so there might have been a chance of winning this although it's looking increasingly more, increasingly more difficult now I think with this kind of race you just really need to take the opportunity early get ahead and sometimes it's very possible to beat people who are faster than you you just have to get track position and just drive a very consistent race and make it very hard for them to get past and I think this is the case here maybe even for second because this guy I did do a practice race just before I actually did the proper race and this guy actually joined my lobby the guy in third right now and uh, he was faster than me in that, in that race so 
That was quite interesting to know. Coming through the chicane then, he's right on my toe. You can see him still with the bottom of the screen. Getting, getting the turn in a lot better that time around. And am I going to have to go defensive into the final hairpin? I'm not going to. He's about four tenths behind, actually, yeah. Just having a quick look. And he's not really within range to go for that move. Going to take the apex very nicely, get on the power very well. Maximising the curve on the exit. And we're going to pull away. He is uh, very close. He's, he's following me very nicely through that corner and I was very confident they couldn't go for a move. I took a slightly defensive line and he didn't go for it so I'm going to keep the position. Every time I'm defending though, every time you take that defensive line is, is suboptimal. You know, you, you're going to be losing time and this is just letting the leader get away. But I think by this point here I've kind of written off the idea of winning this race and just going for second. Although second is still a good result because I started third. Uh, I wasn't the fastest person. And maybe this guy in first is simply a lot quicker and he, he does seem to be very consistent. So coming down the hill, I'm going to have to go defensive again. Move over to the right hand side, he thinks about it and cuts back to the left. So he's got the outside line later on the brakes, deeper into the corner. I've maybe braked a little bit too early. It's a very long corner though. I'm going to seize the advantage as we go into the double chicane here. So it's just about keeping second by the skin of my teeth. Now coming through the chicane, I've got that one done nicely, maximising it as much as possible. And he's actually disappeared off the face of the earth. Looking behind, he's just gone. He's not on the scoreboard on the left-hand side. So I'm imagining a disconnect or possible rage quit from all my blocking. But he's no longer a threat in this race. The threat is now going to come from the German and the Spaniard behind. I'm going to try the undercut here. You see just how close they got as we go into the pit lane. Try to get rid of some of the penalty but still got a quarter of a second to deal with. So we're going to go for the undercut tactic here, which is something I almost never do, because I don't like to have the, the worn out tyres at the end of the race. But the thing that this does is it gives me a, a bigger gap. Hopefully we'll see right now. As we finish lap number seven, all of the other guys have gone into the, the pit lane to do their stops. So at this point here, the gap needs to be a bit bigger. It was about a second. We see that they were very close as I went in. And as I go past the pit lane here, we'll just have a quick look behind there. Here we go. The German, um, over two seconds now. So I've gained about a second or a second and a half as a result of that. So from here to the end of the race, I will have slightly more worn out tyres than the two guys behind me. But I have just gained one and a half seconds, which could be crucial. We'll see how that one plays out. Now we've got the leader ahead. And we've got second and third, although those guys are still to pit. The, the main thing we're hoping for here is to not get held up. We don't want to lose any time behind these two people who are technically slow as they, they're only really benefiting from the fact that I've pitted and they haven't. So we're just hoping that we don't have, have to really lose any time as we come through the chicane. Front grip should be there once again. You can see they're much more committed through the chicane very quickly, maximising it once again much more than the guy ahead so we can easily sweep past them again which has pretty much zero straight line speed up the inside for third although i'm technically second because once this guy peels off to the right hand side is he yes he is there he goes i'm up into second once again you see the gap there much bigger you see i've, I've massively gained as a result of undercutting this is the gap at the beginning of lap 10 still about two and a half seconds this time it's to the spaniard who's overtaken the german behind there it is, as we now begin lap number 12, and a bit further around lap 12, the gap down to 1.6. This wasn't the best lap, because this is where the tyre wear begins to come in, and this is exactly the thing I feared, as I, I run slightly wide, graze the wall on the exit. This is exactly the thing I was fearing, having worn out tyres and having to defend for your position against someone who's got much better tyres. So, can I keep second here, because I've made a mistake for that chicane once again, raising the ball on the way out and the gap has come crashing down from 1.6 to now 0.6 so the Spaniard within slipstream range with one lap left to go I'm going to have to try to keep this position the best I can I'm definitely going to fight it now because there's only one lap, uh, one lap left if it was the first or second lap I might not fight it so much but it's all or nothing now on the final lap of 13 we've been racing for 22 and a half minutes so a fairly long race here and they try to really fight for our position. The German is also there, so if anything should go wrong between the two of us, 
he's going to be in position, he's in prime position to pick up the pieces if we were to make a, some sort of collision and have an accident together. He isn't quite pushing up to the back of me just yet. It's through this chicane here where we're going to really see the difference in grip as we've got a very fast sweeping set of corners. The leader isn't actually too far ahead. I perhaps could have beaten him if I was a little bit more consistent. I'm just going to dip two wheels beyond the curb. And unfortunately, that is a penalty in, uh, under FIA rules. So now, I, I've got to deal with a, an oncoming Spaniard and a 0.874 second penalty. So I really need to preserve this gap as best I can and get to the line and just serve it before the line the best I can. Right, let's see if I can do that into the chicane. This is where it's all going to happen. This is where it's possibly going to unravel. If it is, I've taken it very well, actually. Really done a good job. And actually the Spaniard now, he's going to fall victim to the chicane. The chicane has claimed yet another victim. And I've now got a bit of breathing space to the German. If I can get that gap over a second, then I don't need to serve the penalty because I'll just have a second penalty and I'll just finish ahead of him anyway. It's not quite going to happen though. He's just about 0.6 behind. I'm going to have to serve it. It's going to be very close up to the line. Can I do it? Can I get the job done? Yes, I can. Just about. Let's have a look at that again. Look how close I was to the line before serving that. Oh my, I don't think you can get any closer than that. That was about as close as it can possibly get. I think one pixel, one pixel further and I would have had a one second penalty there. It would have rounded it up. But there we go, finishing second in that race. I think that was a good performance on the whole. Possibly could have won it if I went for the move early on the Viper, but I'm, I'm happy with the amount of points I've got there. 1,700, it puts me around about 100th in the world. Oh, sorry, 100th in my region, so EMEA. And um, at this rate, I'm going to get SS, which is good. Okay, here it is then. This is the second race. This is the Nations Cup now in the go-kart, in the shifter, the 125 shifter. This thing is an absolute mad mental machine. And you may have seen the video I did a couple of months ago around Brands Hatch. We are this time around Sukuba. And starting 13th, qualifying wasn't the best for me, but this is uh, definitely a higher quality lobby than we were just in in the manufacturers. So plenty of points on offer here. If I can somehow salvage some sort of result. The Italian goes very wide there. Into the hairpin. It's, it's going to really kick off. Yes, it is going to kick off. Portuguese guy gets brutally murdered. Let's have a look at that again. And uh, I couldn't quite make out what happened. I think the Italian came flying out of nowhere. And the Portuguese, Portuguese guy kind of teleports with alien technology straight into the wall. Which, well, it didn't really work out for him. He's going to go from middle of the pack way down to last immediately. Which is a big disadvantage. The thing you need around here in these carts... In, in this vehicle, Slipstream is ridiculously OP. So you tuck into that Slipstream and basically people, you, you can't get away from the person behind because they can just they just get sucked along by your vortex, if that doesn't sound too weird. And you can see already on the map, there's a group of about six at the top. Uh, so the first six have just pulled away and that is pretty much settled. So it's going to be really hard to bridge that gap to them because they're just going to keep sucking each other along and it, it just makes it impossible so th this kind of race it forms into these weird little groups where everyone's in each other's uh, suction zone and it's impossible to escape from uh, because it because it's just so overpowered so we're going to see what we can do i mean if we can get to the front of this little group here then we're going to finish seventh which would be a really good cool result anything inside the top 10 in a quality lobby i think for me i would absolutely settle for that kind of result uh, i'm just happy to kind of be in this kind of lobby I, I punt this guy wide, the Frenchman, and I feel really good when I want to slow down, let him go back in the lead. Get punted in the rear end, punt him off again. Oh, it's absolute mayhem. I go down into 18, down into 90. It really didn't go well at all. We still have a chance though. Again, if I'm still in that suction zone, then I can get pulled along, so it's, it's okay. Get past someone, there's a yellow flag I saw briefly. I don't think actually, yeah, there, there it is. The guy just ahead, front of this little group here, just slowing down. So hopefully, we can get through this pack and then start catching up with the next uh, group. You see on the map again, it's dis a distinct three groups where everyone's just formed into these little clusters and it's impossible to escape from each cluster. I'm just going to kind of hope that the cluster ahead starts abusing each other very, very much and you can uh, begin to ca start catching up that way. We'll see if that begins to develop. But we first off, our main issue is trying to get to the front of this little pack. 
as we're squabbling for position, it's really hard to control this thing uh, accurately. The main problem with it is it's so twitchy, so you get a bit of oversteer. The best thing to do is just let it happen, don't even correct it, because you, you try to correct it and you just slide out the other way. And through there, I just about corrected that oversteer, but oh my god, you are on the edge. It, it might look easy, but this really is not easy. You're constantly on, on a knife edge with grit. And if you go one little bit too far then, well, you're going to spin out and kill your chances of any decent result. Into the hairpin, into 18th place. It's, it's not going well at all. Around the outside of the Frenchman, not quite there. Although I do, I do get a better launch off of the turn. And I have the inside line for this turn, so up into 17th. Into the back of the German and the Italian. Can we go about getting further ahead? Actually, not Italian, it's a French person. I can't tell what the difference between blue and green today. So on the exit of the hairpin, this is where you can, sh where you can see the, the suction power. Well, I've just tuck in behind him into that slipstream. So you see how to kind of get pulled along and have a yellow flag situation. Someone off on the left hand side. The Portuguese guy not having a good race, getting, getting murdered at turn one. And then probably a victim of ridiculous oversteer uh, steering problems on the final corner. That final corner is very difficult as well. You, you can take it flat. Well, I'm going to prove that here because you can take it flat if you get it dead right. And if you get a bit of oversteer, correct it. Well, you're going to fly off the other way, just like that. So big problems for me, especially on the controller. It is really difficult. I think this this vehicle you really need on a wheel. But anyway, at the end of the race, I finished 17. I can't around to finish in 17, which really is not a good result. My Nations Cup campaign is going absolutely awfully, whereas my manufacturer is going quite good. And I'm going. I'm heading for an SS rating based on my manufacturer. So as long as I can hold on to that, then I'm then I'm happy. But there we go guys, I do hope you enjoyed it as always, do let me know your thoughts. If you're new to the channel, then consider subscribing, and if you did enjoy the video, then do hit that like button. I shall see you next time guys, thank you very much for watching, goodbye. Listen.